everybody and welcome to Cut the Kibble. I'm Paul and this is Miss Bella, my 12-year-old Bijan, who is a princess and a very lucky girl because I've been home cooking for her for since she was seven months old with the good graces of my vet. And today we're going to be making a salmon recipe. And you know, this is monumental. I always have an apron on and she was barking like crazy because I was setting up stuff. So she, I just didn't put an apron on, I'm sorry. So first of all, let's start, let's look at the oven because this is where I have the salmon. If you, could, if you see that, okay, that's a pound and a half of salmon that I got. It was um, frozen, I defrosted it overnight and it's wild caught Alaskan salmon. So let's get going, enough talking, let's get cooking. All right, Bella? So in my non-stick pan here that I'm trying to get away from Teflon, I am gonna put some, what is this, people? Everybody's been saying, Paula, where are you getting these? And for the past two years, I'm saying at my local store, and the past three months, they haven't had any shiitake mushrooms. I love when I get comments, mushrooms are not good for dogs. Send me those comments and I'll get back to you. Mushrooms, not the ones that are outside. Don't let your dogs eat any of those. But shiitake and reishi mushrooms, especially those two, are medicinal for dogs. They have antifungal, antibacterial properties, anti-inflammatory properties and anti-cancer properties, believe it or not. Dogs that have cancer, they are given these mushrooms. And while this is cooking, let me tell you, we'll go over here real quick. Well, hold up, what, what did you just add? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and I added some red cabbage. It's for the vitamin K and vitamin C and the Bs. And that's my son, I, will want, I do wanna say, that this is the last time my son's gonna be helping me film. If you've seen, we've had some nice overhead pictures because I normally use my tripod and he's been with us for several months and next week, Bella and I, especially Bella, we're gonna be sad that he's gone. But getting back to talking about mushrooms as this cooks for a little bit, um, really mushrooms are, great for dogs and i've talked about dr harvey's products and these are it's a it's just a one you buy it together it's it's 60 dollars. it's expensive but it lasts and it has incredible incredible ingredients this is the am and this is the pm but it has a lot of mushrooms in here so if you want to help your dog's immune system or if your dog has a weak immune system, if your dog has cancer, this is what to get. It's called Solaris, I believe, by Dr. Harvey. So, with shiitake mushrooms or reishi, you have to cook them because by cooking them, it releases the magical powers in it. But you must take off the stems because the stems are, are very tough and you don't want to give anything that's gonna be hard to digest for your dog. And speaking of digestion, I've talked about this a lot. I am not a raw feeder. I am a big proponent of home cooking, lightly home cooking, if you wanna say that, because it helps the dog in digestion. Okay, by the way, I did put some um, uh, coconut oil in here. Hey, isn't that nice? You're not going to see any more of that anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Michael, for helping me with the nice picture, I'm sure. But what was I just talking about? Oh, digestion. Yeah, I, I am not for giving your dog, if you want to give your dog a raw carrot every now and then and, um, you know, pepper, I do that a little bit. Just a little bit for a treat. But in her meals, she gets cooked food. She doesn't get any raw meat and she doesn't get any raw vegetables and as you know I think the only um the only fruit I put in her her meal is the blueberry there's too much fruits in the actual meal it's not good for their digestion I'm just putting in a little bit of the basil and 
I'm going to dump in some thyme because I have this from my um, my arrowroot garden. I have too much of it, and it, it's very good. The basil, as I told you, is very good for their lungs as an expectorant, and um, this herbs are great for the dog. Now, I could put garlic in this, but I forgot to put it in, so I don't even know if I'm going to put it in this time. Should I? What do you think? Eh, what the heck, I'll put it in. We'll come over here and get a clove of garlic. Where's my um, garlic press? Go ahead, I love it. I, I get at least one comment per video that I do on Instagram or on um, YouTube. That, don't you know that garlic is bad for dogs? Don't you know that garlic is very good for dogs when used in the right measurement? And I, you can go on to Dr. Karen Becker and Google garlic for dogs. She'll explain it to you. She's a holistic vet. And she'll leave in the, she has a chart that tells you how much garlic. Oh my goodness, isn't this smelling good? Oh, my YouTube is talking. She went on to, okay, Google. Okay, Google. <laughs> you gotta love that Google. Anyway, um, this really smells good. Once I put that garlic in, mm. Okay, Google is still going to town here. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this. Nice. And now it's beeping. I think my uh, salmon may be ready. I don't know if I can take this out while holding Bella. We'll have to see. So let's go ahead. I don't think that's ready. We're gonna keep that in for a little bit longer. So I, I work with timers, you know. Maybe it's because I'm uh, 61 years old, I, but I have to have timers for everything. So um, we're just gonna stop it right here. Let this cook up a little bit more and let the salmon cook up and I'll catch you on the other side in a few minutes. Okay, we're at the other side of the counter. My salmon just came out of the oven over here cameraman can you look at the salmon for a second <laughs> and what I'm gonna do now um, I'm gonna add some of the ingredients to the food processor I did not use all of the shiitake mushrooms and cabbage what I'm gonna do is um, this is like maybe a quarter of a cup here's the rest of it and I could get three servings out of that and I'll freeze it into three different servings so the next recipe I'm going to do is going to be a London broil. I'll add some to that, uh, and then I'll add some to the pork recipe. I need to do another one of those. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. I can't tell you how much it smells so wonderful. Blueberries. Blueberries go in all my recipes. And then here I have some butternut squash that I cooked from scratch. And I'm gonna have to give some to my sous chef here. It's like candy. It's, it's just like candy. And these are asparagus that I actually roasted this morning. Um, I, I keep on saying this, but the price of asparagus has dropped. It used to be $6 for like two pounds at Costco. Now it's like $4 and some. And now the salmon is um, a pound and a half. I measured it last night. So for each pound of protein, you have to add a teaspoon of um, calcium. You must, must, must add calcium to a homemade diet, okay? And I'm going to add my cut the kibble Omega Busta, which is a mixture of hemp hearts, flaxseed, and pumpkin seeds. Now, I am not going to add sardines to this. I always add sardines, but this is salmon. I don't want it to be too rich for her because she has a sensitive stomach. I'm not adding the liver. 
because this is, is rich and heart. I only have two more servings of heart left that I'm gonna add to my uh, other proteins that I'm making next week. I need to call the farmer and get some more heart and bones. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the salmon. And I don't know, probably didn't do this the right way. Um, I better grab, hold on a second, a spoon here. And I'm gonna just cut this up a little. I actually used the parchment paper that I roasted the um, asparagus on, you know, to try to be more resourceful. Oh, this looks so good. We're actually, Michael and I are actually having salmon tonight and Bill will get a little. This is, she only gets salmon on um, Fridays because she's a Catholic. Well, she was a Catholic, not anymore. Yeah, that's so good for you. Want some more? Yeah, that's good for you. Can you come over here? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> she loves cooking with her mama. Okay, so now we're going to get the salmon, and hopefully nothing's going to fall. And I'm going to put it all in here. Okay, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And we're done, people. All I'm going to do is mix it together. And you notice I put the powder in the middle so the powder doesn't go up to this container. <laughs> So I'm gonna to have to help this along a little and um, I'm gonna package it up. She's around 14 pounds. She gets four ounces twice a day of her proteins, egg meals in the morning, and I rotate her proteins at night. And like I said, on Fridays, she gets salmon. This will probably make maybe seven meals. So I won't have to cook this for uh, a month, almost two months away. So. Home cooking is easy, and the more proteins you add, the less cooking you have to do. I hope I have inspired you to home cook or at least put a little human-grade food into your dog's food because she's 12 years old, and she acts like a puppy. And I really feel it's because of all the good food that I give her. All right, that's it from Miss Bella and myself. Take care.